left side of, left side of diagram. Let's talk about throttle position. Throttle position sensor number one. Pin 18 is your throttle position sensor number one. That's your signal line into the PCM. Pin 18 is your signal into the PCM. That's your input signal. That varies from 4.5 volts closed throttle to about half a volt maximum throttle opening. So it's a little difference. This one starts with high voltage and closed throttle. As you open up throttle, it goes down to towards 0.5. But look at this, we have a combination of t throttle position number 1 and 1019. Throttle position number 2. Throttle position number 2 is an input, an input pin 19. That's a TP2. It varies from a half a volt closed throttle to 4.5 volts of maximum throttle. That's a different from the first one. One starts off high, goes low, and one starts off low and go high. Now, failure on one TP sensor, such as a DTC, and limits the maximum throttle opening to about 35%. Failure on both TP sensors, the throttle actuator control will be disabled with a fast idle. So basically what I'm saying here, if both TP, TP sensors go out, your throttle, your throttle control is limited to about 35%. Then you have a fast idle. The vehicle have a fast idle. Now, let me show you something really quick. Now, look at the throttle position here. We just talked about the throttle position sensor on the uh, composite vehicle number three. Now, look at this diagram here. On here at zero percent opening, but right. I mean, the throttle is closed. The TP sensor number one starts off at four and a half volts. As you increase the throttle. It goes down to about 0.5 volts, as you can see here. But for sensor number two, TP number two, we start off at a half a volt, which is here. After you increase the throttle angle, it goes up to about four and a half volts. But you see about here. But you can see it's two throttle position sensors work differently, but it helps control better fuel accuracy for the vehicle. So one starts off high and goes low, and one starts off low and goes high. So that's the throttle position sensors. Let me switch back to the other screen. Now, the next thing on play, on deck, I should say, is the EGR position sensor. That's pin number 20. Now, the EGR position sensor is basically your input for the EGR valve. This is pin 20 here. That's pin 20, right there. 
That's your eject position sensor. At idle, we should have about a half a volt closed valve to a fully open valve. It goes up to about 4.5 volts. That's your input into the PCM to tell the PCM the position of the eject valve for better control. The next one is your crank position sensor. That's pins 21 and 22. These two right here. This is a magnetic magnetic type sensor. See the positive and negative on this? That's your crank position sensor. That's one of your most important signals into this vehicle. Okay? So it's like an AC magnetic signal. That's where you inject the pulse and ignition and uh, inject the pulse trigger. A very important signal. That's your crank. That's your crank position sensor. The next one, number twenty-three, is your map sensor, which is here. That's your map sensor. That's your signal into the map sensor. So that's your load. That's your load. At zero inches of vacuum, we should have about four and a half volts. By 18 inches, it should drop to like one and a half volts. So the car's idling. At 18 with 18 inches of vacuum, I should have about 1.5 volts, give or take. Had the vacuum drops, my voltage goes up, indicating I'm under a load. Give it more fuel. Adjust the timing. So that's my map sensor. The next one would be my knock sensor. That's pin 24. That's this one here. That's pin 24. That's a knock sensor. As the engine vibrates, the knock sensor generates an AC voltage spikes into the PCM. So when, it, so when the knock sensor picks up a vibration from the engine, it generates a AC spikes. Those varying signals go into the PCM telling PCM there's a knock. The PCM de uh, use that signal to adjust the timing. Use it to retard the timing and stop them from pinging. And let keep the emissions low. So that's your AC signal into the PCM from your knock sensor. The next sensor is pin 25. That's your coolant temperature sensor. It's a negative temperature coefficient thermistor. Basically meaning it changes resistance with temperature. That's pin 25. Now one thing especially about this sensor. As pin 1 up here. Fed certain, about 6 sensors. But you notice it did not feed the ECT or IAT sensors. Both the ECT pin 25 and IAT pin 26 have their own individual 5 volt reference as you can see here ECT and IAT Basic, basically got the PCM does a voltage drop off that second resistor which is the ECT or IAT sensor and it can calculate how cold it, how cold it, the coolant is the cold car, normal operating temperature for open loop, closed loop, operate solenoids, transmission, EGR, EVAP, all the incoming air, which is the intake air temperature sensor. So those two sensors do not rely on pin one. They had their own individual 5 volt drivers. The next one, the AC pressure sensor, pin 27, is used by the ECM to control the AC compressor, clutch, right? The voltage ranges from that sensor either went from 0.2 volts to 4.5 volts, depending on the pressure. That's pin 27, as you can see right here. That's pin 27. The next one is pin 28, which is your fuel tank pressure sensor. That sensor the vapor pressure or vacuum in the EVAP system for testing. That's that pin. Fuel tank pressure sensor is pin 28. Alright, so it's coming off the fuel tank pressure sensor into pin 28.
The next one is the fuel level sensor, 1029. That determines the fuel level for testing also. Because using an OBD2 car it had to be at least a three quarters four full or quarter a quarter inch full to, to, to do certain tests. And we already know and we already know pen uh, 31 is your sense of ground. And number 32 is your case ground. So we got the power, we got the sensors. Um, uh, I'm pretty, pretty sure I told you the sensors, right? You, obviously, you can see the sensors. Like that's the TPS, that's the EGR position sensor, two potentiometers, or I should say three potentiometers. Then you got your crank sensor. Then you got your crank sensor, the map, knock. ECT and IAT, AC pressure sensor, tank pressure sensor, and fuel level sensor. So we got the